Ant and Sammy explain. Geocaching, it's in the game. Hey, so you're trying geocaching for the first time. You downloaded the app, you found the area you want to explore, and selected the cache you want to find. So open up the cache page, and at the top you'll see the navigate and sign log functions, which we'll talk about later in the video. But three ratings for the cache itself. Rating one to five being the difficulty, one the easiest. Rating 1.5 being terrain, 1.5 being fairly easy, and then size of cache. So in this first cache, we're looking for a micro-sized container, which will be anything the size of a 35 millimeter film pot or smaller. Let's use the navigate feature in the geocaching app to help us find the location of the cache. You're the blue triangle in the white circle there and getting closer to the co location of the cache. Here we'll use the hint to give us an idea of where the cache might be. As you can see, the path gets really muddy here, so always make sure you're dressed for the conditions you might expect. Here we have footpath markers, and the arrows should always be pointing in the direction that you should walk. At round zero, it's time to find the cache itself, and we've already had a hint to, to show us where that cache may be. Open the cache, and inside will be a log which you can sign to physically evidence that you have found this cache. Having signed the cache, put that back into the container and then can go back to the app to log your message. And that will give a digital record of you finding the app. Here you can see I'm not just writing TFTC, not that there's a problem with that. I'm actually writing a little bit of a story behind how I found the cache. So we found our first cache and logged the find. Brilliant. Now off to find the second cache. But always keep an eye out for any dangers such as barbed wire that's being used by the farmers to line their fields. In this instance, the cache owner has placed the cache away from any disasters like barbed wire. And we've found it using the clue, Dwayne Johnson. And it's time to sign the cache. Notice how the size of this second micro cache is smaller than the previous cache. So we found our second cache, we've signed a piece of paper and we're going to replace the cache as we found it. It's time to log your cache online digitally. Now, before I said, you can write a short message such as TFTC, which is an abbreviation for thanks for the cache. I tried to write something a bit longer because I think that the cash owner probably gets a bit bored seeing multiple TFTCs and I write something in addition just to make them smile. there bending away in the distance and clouds scudding across the sky that's got a beautiful sun out so peaceful and it's time to log the fact that in this instance we did not find the cache now don't be embarrassed to say you did not find the cache as it helps the cache owner in monitoring and maintaining their series now we're using the navigate function on the geocaching app to find 
the fourth cache in the series that we're going to look at today. In this instance, we're finding a small container, which is around the size of the sandwich. But and this is a well-maintained cache, as it has lots of interesting trinkets and swag for the kids to enjoy. And I like to make sure that I add to that swag, nothing expensive, stuff 50p to a pound, because I think that if I was a kid, and when I had my kids out cashing with me, that would be what I would want to find in the end box. So time to pack away and replace the cash, having signed the physical log, and then log online digitally to record that I've found it. Now at this point, I had to return back to the start as I hadn't charged up my phone in the morning, so I'd run out of battery. So another tip for you there, always make sure your phone is fully charged. But again, it's an opportunity to show the sort of terrain that we're dealing with. I think the 1.5 rating on this cache was probably because there was that incline up the hill to the fourth cache. And now we're making our way back down the footpath into the pub car park. Now on the geocaching map, you'll see smiley faces for the caches you've completed successfully and a blue face for the cache you did not find. On the screen, there's also further green caches, which are traditional uh, caches that we're showing you what else Time to get ourselves some food and always make sure that all the parties in the geocaching crew are cared for. My food's arrived, a nice freshly cooked fish finger sandwich. And just as I'm about to tuck in, I notice that another member of the party has spotted and I need to share. So thanks for listening and I hope you found this helpful to show you what to expect from a geocaching trip. I really enjoy geocaching. I hope you do too. Keep smiling.